Thomas. Thomas. Thomas Groves. Ho ho. Hey guys, Chris Russell all here with another episode of uh, Modern with Michael Fudge. And today, we're going to. Sorry, I'm moving the mic here. Uh, today, we're going to be going on about uh, basically an armor tick, okay? So, as some of you may remember, if you may have seen my previous tutorials on armor and things like that, okay? Um, I did an episode on tick handlers where I showed you how to um, sort of get a potion effect to be added to the player when he's wearing certain armor, okay? So, hmm. We're going to do exactly the same during this episode. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go public static void on armor tick, I think it is. First um, parameters are going to be, I think it was, oh, I'm not too sure what it was, so I guess we'll just go and check because it's in the item class, okay? So we're gonna just hit control F on armor. So just put on arm, on arm attack, okay, and it's, oh, it was world, okay. So I'm just going to copy this over into our class here, okay. And from there on, we are going, it wasn't even static, so it wouldn't have been right anyway. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go if, okay, so I'll probably explain, let me explain what this does first, okay. So, basically on arm attack, it's basically, it allows us to increment values when, some, when this event has been triggered, which is on armor tick. So when an event inside of this method here has been triggered, it's going to start ticking the class, okay? So that's basically in short what that is. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go if the player, okay, so we only want this to happen if the player dot get current armor, okay? Okay. And then basically what we need to specify in here is what we want to call upon, okay? So you might remember, if we go into our tut item class, so TM item, okay, uh, and when we were creating our things, okay, it went 0, 1, 2, 3, okay, like that, okay, however, it's the other way around in this case, where boots are 0, helmets, uh, the boots are 0, pants are 1, plate is 2, and and the helmet is 3, okay, so we're going to start off with 3, okay, so we say, if, okay, the player dot get current uh, so basically the helmet slot inside of the inventory is not equal to anything, so we're going to go not equal to null, then we want me to continue, okay? And what we're actually going to do here now is we're going to create a variable, okay? And it's going to be an item stack variable. So, item stack helmet, okay? And we're going to set this this variable equal to something in the in the player NC player class, okay? So NC, so the player dot get current armor. I just going to be free, okay? So that's going to be caught off on the helmet, okay? So that is very very simple as you guys could probably guess, okay? It's just basically inside of the get current armor. This is an item stack um, declaration, okay? So it's going to be looking for the inventory armor item in slot, okay? So that's what allows us to render things to the player, etc., etc. Okay, so what we want to do then is we want to go if, sorry, if the helmet, okay? As you can remember some from previous tutorials, such as the first tutorial, uh, we can do some with item stack by going dot get item. Oops. Dot get item. Okay. Sorry for my sound a bit stuffy today. I've got a bit of a, well, I guess you could call it hay fever. Mm. Because British summertime, even though it's not even summer yet, and I get I've only had hay fever in the past two years, but it's ridiculous. I can barely breathe from my nose. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Just want to see if this item is equal to TM item dot touch helmet okay so that's going to be going for the helmet slot that's what goes in there then we want to do something like player so this is an example we could do you could do anything in here pretty much but in this example we're going to be adding a potion effect to the player so we're going to go player dot add potion effect new potion effect and then obviously in here we need to go potion dot add and I will do confusion for the head Potion dot confusion dot get ID comma then that's this is how long it lasts for so we can set this to a hundred ticks because remember ten ticks is 0.5 of a second so one tick is point is um, obviously point one okay so so that's two picks it's point one event one of that okay 
Yeah, okay, I'm getting myself confused here. But okay, well, 100 ticks is basically 5 seconds. Uh, 50 ticks would be 2.5 seconds. 10 ticks would be 1 second, okay. Etc, etc, okay. So that's the t amount of ticks it's going to last for. It will stay constant while the player's wearing the armor, though. So as soon as he takes it off, it's only going to last for 5 more seconds. Okay. And then, obviously, then we want to go somewhere like... Uh, is the level. So we can do it as the normal one. Level 2, level 3, level 4. We'll just set it to level 2 for now, so we'll have it as 1. So, import that. And you see, now it works. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to run this on a server to prove, because I got I got this question asked uh, a couple of days ago, is if everything works on server. Okay, because basically said, they're expecting that things like the furnace will not work on the server, but I can assure you it does, I've tested it, okay? But the way we test this is we need to go to Eclipse, go to... Uh, Eclipse, go to... Where is it? Probably need to run the server first. So it's going to run. Okay, we'll run the Eclipse. Okay, and we'll also run Client for now. That's done, okay. We'll stop that for now. Oh, I tried to stop it before it's even ready to stop. That's not good. Okay, can we stop? <laughs> there we are, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to Eclipse. Go to... Right, let's refresh this. There we are. There we are, okay. So we're going to go to Eclipse.server.properties. And we're going to go to... Where is it? Online. We're looking for online. But, uh, I'm probably just being complete blind here. Online mode, oh, there we are. Online mode, and we'll set false, okay. Because that's how you get the uh, how you get one of these to join a client, um, what's it called? A server, because it won't let you join, else you can type in any AP and try and join that. Okay. But, um, this still works, even though it's in offline mode virtually, okay? Because basically what that allows us to do is it outputs the same error if it's, I don't know, your code's incorrect, okay? So there's no need, need reason to worry. So I'm just going to type in my local host, okay? I'm not going to type in my IP because I would not like you guys to find out my IP. I'm going to type in my IPv4. Oh, dot one. No, uh, nine, sorry. Two, five, five, six, five. There we are. I would have typed, uh, you could also connect to an external IP, but not going to happen because, yeah, that's a bad thing, okay? Damn it, I should probably have set this to creative mode as well. Uh, before I joined. Up, oh, player. Nine, five, three. Okay. So we're going to go game mode creative. Look what's going on here. Game mode C. What do we have that permission? I gave him permission. Up, oh, player. <laughs> God. Nine. Five, three. There we are. Dash game mode C. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go grab our helmet, uh, which is in combat. Put it in here, and we'll place this on, and you'll see we will get confusion for five seconds. Okay, like I said, it's confusion too. Like I said as well. So we're just going to fly above all of here. Okay, and you'll see that if we take it off, it's going to last for five more seconds. It will just start to disappear. And yes, okay, so we're good like that. Okay, however, let's say you wanted the player to have to have multiple items on for this to work, okay? So you could do the you could do the same for all of them, so we could go uh, we could reset this thing, okay? And we could go if the player we'll do it for uh, boots, I say, okay? So player dot get uh, current armor. Okay. And we'll set this to, I don't know, the boots, which was zero. If it's not equal to null, then we want to continue or create something to. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I want to go item stack. Boots is equal to player dot get armor zero. Okay. And then obviously we want to do the same thing here, but we'll add some like jump boost. <laughs> Dot jump. Okay. 
But like I said, let's say you wanted to have the player to have to wear multiple things, okay? So you had to wear, like, I don't know, a full set, or in this case, he has to wear the, hel the helmet and the chest piece, okay? Then wh what we do is, inside of here, we go, and, like that, so the two hand symbols, okay, so let's check this checks for something, okay? So we go, player dot get current armor two, okay? So that's the uh, plate, and we're not equal to null. Well, they can wear the pants as well, so we go player dot get current armor one, which is the pants, okay? If that's not equal to null, then we want you to continue. So we'll create more variables in here, okay? So it would be plate, and obviously there'll be uh, pants, okay? Now, obviously, we need to set these to the, the correct value. So, two, one, okay. And obviously, in the same in here, we need to go and and plate dot get item. If it's equal to tm item dot tot plate, then continue. And obviously, we want to do the same for the pants dot get item. If it's equal to um, tm item dot tot pants. Okay, then we want you to continue, okay? So what we're going to do is actually run the server on the client to prove that it works. <laughs> I think I just run the server twice. Yeah, I did. So let's stop one of them. Stop the first one. And that's the second one, Arrows. Yep, the second one, Arrows. Damn it. So we'll run the server. And we'll go into multiplayer. I'll we'll join the server. Right about now. Oh, now. There we are. Damn it, I need to set it to create mode again. Uh, player 7. Player 7. 6. 5. Okay, so that's me up now. Okay, so game of C. So now we need to get the correct items for our player. So we said if he wears the boots, sorry. So we'll get this up. The pants, the chest plate, and the helmet. So if, like we said, if we wear boots, he will get jump boost. So you see now, if we actually jump. Oh. It's going on here. Okay, so you see we are actually errored here. Which is rather odd. Get the current armor not equal to null. Uh we done some... Oh, we set this to the wrong value. I should probably stop this. Cancel. Quit. Okay, let me just change this to creative quickly as well. Game mode. One. Okay, and um, basically what I did in here is I actually set this to tot helmet when it should have been tot boots. Like so, I'm going to run this in debug mode now just in case I actually screw something up. Okay, so now it should actually matter if we're opt or not on the server because we should be in create mode, nonetheless. So we we'll join it. Server's joined. We are in create mode, like I said, we should be. If we go into correct our helmet, our chest plates. Whoops, I dropped the chest plate. Our pants and our boots. If we place the boots on, you'll see that we. Oh, we're actually getting some jump boost now. Jump boost too. Like so, you see, you see, we're actually jumping higher than normal. Okay. Okay, so let's take them off. And you see, if we actually, so like we also said, if we get, if we place on our um, this this helmet, plates, and boots, uh, not boots and pants, sorry, then we said that we get confusion. But you see, if we place the helmet on, nothing happens. Okay, which is good. Place the chest plate on. Nothing happens, which is good. Place the pants on. Something's happening. Okay, that's good. That's a good sign. So that means that the effect is working and it's distorting the screen, which is exactly what we expected it to do and what we wanted it to do. So it's doing everything we wanted it to do. And you see, we can place the boots on at the same time and have the two things on it at once, which is really cool. And we can move around like this, even though I don't see why I want this. Okay. So we can take all these off. Just a heads up, okay, because that's the end of the tutorial, guys. But just a heads up, never do anything in here, like, okay, so we comment this out for now, where it changes the player's capabilities, okay? 
So if you change the player capabilities, it's like, oops, typing that in there. Player, damn it, I'm not wanted to type. Player dot. Front side ticking. Oh, flip. I see what's going on here. It's because it's ticking still, okay? So what we need to do, we can do player dot capabilities. It's the reason it's doing that is because it's ticking while the armor's there, okay? Dot. Uh, basically allow flying, okay? Um, basically, if this is edited, so say we were in survival at this point, so we can set... Uh, let's up. What's our player name? 859, okay. Up. Player. 859, okay, so if we try to edit some of the capabilities of the player, so if we go into game mode, S, okay, if we try to up, uh, edit some of these, so if we allow, allow flying them in true, okay, if we placed on this, this, and this, you see that we should be able, be able to fly around in survival mode, okay, so which is pretty cool, okay, but however, here comes the issue, if we take them off, obviously we take no damage when we're flying, but, we're still able to fly, okay? And we don't want that to be a thing, okay? We only want to be able to fly when this is happening, okay? I have not figured out a way around this yet. However, I did only figure out, I did only try attempt to do this for a quick tutorial five minutes ago. Because the tutorial's been going out because I'm been revising, okay? But you see, we're still able to fly, which isn't a good thing, okay? So, um, yeah. I guess see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching. This has been the Growth Project 101. Showing you shouldn't edit player capabilities on the Armour Ticks, anyway. And I guess see you guys later. Bye!